guest actually, um, she doesn't need loads of introduction because everyone will know what she does. Um, she is uh, the CEO of CMHA, ambassador for um, mental health first aid. She's um, won numerous um, uh, accolades. Uh, she received an OBE this year. Um, she is Poppy Jaman. But before we speak to her, here's a little clip of what she's been doing. Poppy Jaman. Matro Atharamas Boyshe, Bangladesh Molivajar Thiki, Mabavar Shate Parejoman Britain, Portsmouth Beduta. Prothom Moremoto, Edeshe, Mental Health Fast Aid Shuchuna, Obisha Lobodane Juno, Order of British Empire, Shonkepe Obi Ketape, Anonditutini. I'm absolutely surprised and also really delighted to have um, received an OBE in um, the honours list this year. But I'm also really clear that I just represent hundreds and thousands of people that have been delivering mental health first aid in England and all around the world. So I feel very honoured because I'm receiving um, a recognition for so many people's work and so I'm, I'm, you know, like I say, I'm delighted to be receiving the OBE. Mental Health First, uh, First Aid is a training organisation. We've been going in England for 10 years. We were the third country out of 24 countries now doing Mental Health First Aid. I and a group of people at M M Department of Health founded Mental Health First Aid and then I was asked to take it out of Department of Health and um, lead it to become a social enterprise. Globally, we're in 24 countries. We've trained approximately 3 million people around the world. In England, we've trained 248,000 mental health first aiders. Apart from my career journey though, I would say, you know, 450 million people will experience, are experiencing a mental health issue all around the world. When I was in Uganda, Bangladesh, I saw people in what, what is supposed to be hospitals, but in chains. and. That's a human rights violation. Bangladesh has now set up a, um, a voluntary sector organisation called um, Innovation for Wellbeing Foundation. And under Innovation for Wellbeing Foundation, we're funding. So Mental Health First Aid England is supporting Bangladesh um, to develop its Mental Health First Aid programme. We need role models. And I think um, we particularly need female role models. We're third, fourth generation in this country now. And I feel that it's really important that we are celebrated, um, that we demonstrate our successes and we also clear the path for the next generation coming up to demonstrate that you can, anything's possible, you can do whatever you want to do so long as your heart's in it. Wow, Poppy. You are, you are a pioneer in this, honestly. Um, it's incredible the amount of people that, um, you know, just mental um, health first aid have, have reached out to, yeah. how many people have been involved in this. Look, um, Bobby, you're, you know, I think I would consider you as an expert. Thank you. Um, why, why do you think it's important to address mental health? Well, I think it's, it's important because one in four of us are going to experience a mental health issue in our lifetime. So that means, you know, a quarter, that means, you know, the, the, the quote that I, the stat in, in the clip, 450 million people worldwide are in this moment experiencing a mental health issue of, of some kind. And mental ill health is also the leading, leading health issue worldwide, global health issue. So, it doesn't make sense that we wouldn't be having this conversation mm. because actually if we had a pandemic, a physical you know, pandemic of some kind happening, the whole world would be talking about it and we'd be trying to work out how we address it. Mm. So I think it's, it's really important that we actually talk about it. And I think, I know we're going to talk about this a bit more, but the South Asian community, the Bangladeshi community in particular, you know, we've got additional stressors that we shy away from and it's it's an issue that we need to mm. we need to own discuss get educated on mm. um, I think I think I don't know I mean you can you can elaborate on this but I I, I still feel there is some sort of stigma yeah. um, especially within our community we don't really hear about it in in the Bangladeshi community yeah. um, at all um, but, but why is that 
Well, if you think about um, if you think about mental illness, and if you then think about the images, like just stop a moment and just think about you know mental illness. What's what are the images coming up in your mind? Uh, somebody that's not stable. Yeah. Somebody that's not coping. Yeah. Um, and, and the thing about so why would you want to associate with not coping, not stable? Do you know what I mean? So actually mm. all the impressions, the imagery, the the narrative around mental ill health is negative. When I was in Bangladesh um, and we visited uh, with the government hospital in Dhaka, people were locked up, you know, people were there. So your freedom is taken away from you because you've had a mental, because you've got a mental ill, Ill, Ill illness. Mm. Um, there, were, there were guys in shackles, there were people that were over medicated. Now, so that's, that's our, home country and mm. that's the perception of me you know how mental ill health is is supported is mm. so if we're coming from that level of stigma why would any one of us mm. want to associate with mental illness mm. and i think there's a big and then even if you look at most south asian languages don't have a um, word for depression right yeah so um so we haven't even got the language to be talking about mental health issues, mental illness. And then there's the big difference, um, Queen Or, between mental health and mental illness. So most of, there's, there's a common misunderstanding. When I say mental health, that I'm talking about mental ill health, so I'm talking about depression, anxiety, psychosis, schizophrenia. I'm not. When I'm talking about mental health, like your physical health, I'm talking about your financial health. We know that debt, is a leading cause of anxiety and stress. Um, caring responsibilities. We know that actually, particularly, um, I was speaking to a group of um, young professionals in the city in, from the South Asian community, and there was guys in their 30s saying, look, you know, I've got my parents who live with me, um, and that's great because it means I haven't got childcare issues, but I've also got three kids, and recently dad fell ill, and I don't know how to, progress my career, be at home to care mm. for my elders because I really want to do that, but also be at home to be a good parent. Now, that's a stressor, which is just normal part of life. So if you put that, and then let's go back to debt for a moment. In the Bangladeshi community, most of us are supporting families back home, which mm. again is a great thing because we're mobilizing society, we're looking after our brothers and sisters and, and family back home. But that's a financial stress to raise a family in this country and at home. Mm. Let's just put two of those things in, in God, the pot yeah. and suddenly you've got, you've got pressures and stresses. And if those get carry on for a long period of time, you are going to develop or highly likely to develop a mental health issue like depression, like um, anxiety disorders. Mm. So my um, view and the way mental health first aid has been set up is let's educate ourselves on how, to recognize early signs of stress. So when we stop sleeping, when we stop eating, when we overeat, when we withdraw from our families, when we feel like there's a negative voice in our heads telling us that we're not worthy. Mm. Let's address stress at that level so that actually we don't get poorly mm. and, and suicide is the very sad outcome mm. of mental ill health that isn't dealt with. And we also know from data that Asian women are two and a half times more likely to try and kill themselves. Um, the South Asian community is two times less likely to seek help mm. because we're ashamed of being, of saying, of the weaknesses. Yeah, yeah. and I think, but, but also, I think, you know, just from just looking and speaking to people, the other thing that comes into mind when people are suffering um, from mental illnesses is that there is this um, notion where we'll pray to God. You yeah. know, you don't need medicine. Yeah. That's it's, it, this is it's made up. You know, yeah. there is this concept that all you need to do is pray. All yeah. you need to do is have faith. Yeah. And you move away from medicine because like you said, it, depression, for example, doesn't exist, yeah. a vocabulary. It's really difficult when you have generations of Bangladeshis in this country who have relied just on praying and things like that. They have gone through a lot of hardship. How, how can we 
help these individuals? Uh, how can we make them aware that actually it's okay to seek for help? Yeah. So, uh, you know, God, you know, so Allah has given, told us that we must look after our health, yeah? So that's yeah. one of the, one of the, um, duties that of care that we have to ourselves and 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 to God for for creating us in the first place. So, I mean, I'm not um, uh, I'm not a religious scholar, but what I do understand is that we have a responsibility to look after our health because our health is a gift to us from God. Mm. So, I the way I look at this is yes, praying is critical to your recovery, and spiritual health and faith is really important to recovery because actually that gives us. Um, healing that allows us to reflect and, and gain strength from a from a bigger bigger uh, uh, b b bigger than the material world, but we also have a responsibility to go and seek health uh, health support. So if we had broken a leg, we wouldn't just go. I'm going to sit and pray, mm -hmm. and God will heal this. We so and it's that it's exactly the same thing. If we actually aren't sleeping for six weeks, behaving irritably, know that actually we've got negative thoughts, know that we're beginning to f move over into a place of distress, we should absolutely be going to seek help. And that help might be different things for different people. We teach people to go straight, go to your GP and have a conversation because mm. it will be a combination of medication, talking therapy. Mm. You know, I've met a number of psychologists, psychi uh, psychiatrists, and and um, counsellors from the Bangladeshi community in very recent times, and I think it's great that we've got more Asian people actually stepping into this uh, this area because the uh, intersectionality of race, culture, gender mental health need to be understood and that only that the, the therapeutic provision can only be great if if i've got a understanding of what mm -hmm. that means um so actually therapy and talking is is the is the number one thing that you can do to look after yourself mm -hmm. and actually uh, deal with this before you go anywhere near yeah. medication you need to be able to talk about this and that's the thing that we've got to do in our community and, and sometimes i hear you know obviously the generation that came to this country at first you know they went through a lot of hardship yeah. you know settling in and things like that but then you have their children and their children's children and um, a lot of sometimes you hear people saying well you know we didn't suffer like this back home but it was different i think you know when you have children here and their children they're growing up in a in a society where you're growing up with uh, british values as well as your bangladeshi values surely that has an impact also yeah. on people's mental health yeah because i think um you know the expectation so the, the great thing about the bangladeshi community and our families is that we live in big extended families you know we don't go anywhere in two or threes we, we turn up on mass and mm -hmm. and i love that bit because mm -hmm. actually i think it's it's great and one of the things that we know about mental health is community is important your network's important your family's net important so in some senses our communities and our families are already set up to support us in the positive way but then when you actually break that down and what does that mean for some of us so you know my generation um so I, i'm i'm second third generation in this country you know i was born in bangladesh mm -hmm. but my granddad and then my, my my dad and then me so as a woman i think i you know i was probably one of the first in my in my hometown of portsmouth to be driving for example and back then that was seen as a bit of a big deal you know actually <laughs> you're going to be driving are you going to own your own car and you know and i'm we're some way away from that now. I also remember sort of being one of the first people to get a job that wasn't up down the road and around the corner. It was in London and mm. that was a big deal because actually you're a woman and you're gonna be commuting an hour and a half each day and what does that look like and who's gonna, why aren't you at home and shouldn't your children come first? And so you've got sort of generational expectations um, uh, that are projected. So our elders' expectations may be something that doesn't fit in with what I want to do and what my children want to do um, and vice versa you know my, my children might have an expectation of their nanny about behaving or doing something in a certain way that my mum doesn't want to do so I think it works both ways and that does cause a lot of stress and I think particularly in relation to our marriage traditions yeah 
you know, we've got um, uh, introduced marriage, arranged marriage is still very much common practice in our communities. And, and you know, the rates of divorce are, are, are increasing. Um, and then if I, when I said earlier, you know, Asian women are two and a half times more likely to try suicide, you, you've got to st step back and think about what that might be like, what might be about. Don't know because there's not well, enough well, this research. Is it. You don't know. Yeah, yeah, we don't know. But I let's think about sort of the 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 introduced marriage system for a moment. Most of the time, uh, uh, the women are expected to move home and live with their partner's home, which again, amazing experience, but brings with it ch challenges. You've got to reform new relationships. Mm. So you know, son-in-law's got this expectation to live up to as being the you know the son-in-law and the role modelling that comes with that. And daughter-in-law's got the expectations of you know what does a good good daughter-in-law mm. and, and and sometimes that means actually you shouldn't be working and you should be at home. So you lose your identity. So. Mm. There's something about, um, you know, we know that moving home is in the top four stresses in society. So if you've just had, got married, you're moving away from your hometown, getting to know a whole new family, learning to be a wife, mm. and then amongst that, trying to find your identity. And actually, sometimes you might have moved countries. Sometimes you might not even be moving from London to Birmingham. It might be Bangladesh to, mm. to here. What does that look like and the stresses within <laughs> that? And we don't talk about it no. because we think that actually it should all be okay. We need to talk about what good relationships mean mm. and we need to talk about how we connect with our elders and how we maintain those relationships and vice versa. I think it's really important what you've touched on because I think sometimes when people go through this, there is a certain expectations, I guess, for their when they've gone through it, their children have grown up, that they'll go through that. And mm. it's like a cycle and yeah. we need to break out of it. Yeah. Um, we're running out of time, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. um, in your view, um, if anyone is watching right now, um, if, they could, if anyone could take something away today in order to help somebody that may be suffering and don't know what to do, how, what, what's your advice? So oh, for, for individuals, I think, get educated. You yeah. know, there is so much information. Mind have got a load of um, literature, particularly around minority communities. So let's get ourselves educated as Bangladeshi um, citizens, communities, family members, what is mental health? And let's learn how to have a good quality conversation that isn't judgmental. So that's the first thing I would say as individuals, get ed educated, talk about it, don't be ashamed, seek help early. Those are absolute essentials, mm -hmm. learn what is good mental health and learn how to maintain your mental health and well-being. The second thing I would say is as a community, you know, you and I met through the British Bangladeshi Power and Inspiration group. Um, and there's a hundred of us in that group, yeah, in that list, in that book. And I'm sure there's thousands of people out there of our generation doing some amazing stuff. As a community, we need to coordinate and champion the mental health agenda. Mm. People say that it should be celebrity led. I, I don't agree. It should be led by you and mm. I and, and those of us that are, have got some influence mm. to talk about our own mental health, what keeps us well, what we don't, uh, what doesn't add to our life and how do we work together to move through this respecting our culture and community mm. and our faith. Thank you so much, Poppy. I, can you come back again? Because I want to learn more about, especially men in our community yeah. as well, because they must suffer, you know, well, um, so much highest, as well. Yeah, yeah, as well as women. Well, men are at the highest um, uh, 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 risk of suicide under the age of fifty. I think forty-eight or something. Anyway, so men are mm. uh, adult men are at the highest highest risk of suicide, and they don't talk about it. So each of these agendas needs to be outed. And yeah, let's let's talk more. Oh, thank you, thank so, you so much. much.